Welcome, everybody, to the Something in the Air podcast. I'm meteorologist Joe Martucci. We are wrapping up with climatological fall. Winter is around the corner, and maybe nobody loves winter in New Jersey more than the guy next to me, New Jersey State climatologist Dr. Dave Robinson. Am, am I saying that uh, correctly? Well, I, I do enjoy the winter, the, the winter weather. I don't know if I'm. I I know other zealots who are far more crazy about snowstorms than me, but I, <laughs> I enjoy a good snowstorm. I just figured, you know, since you are the operator of the Rutgers Global Snow Lab, that, uh, you know, this is really like your uh, prime time here as we go into the winter. Uh, yeah, it's been very interesting. I've been getting a couple calls. There have been a couple stories out about the record snow cover across the northern hemisphere lands in November and, and how it's going to lead to this mega winter. And, you know, there was very extensive snow cover over North America and Eurasia above normal in mid-November, but it's backed off in the last week of November, particularly across um, North America. Yeah. Uh, but there's been a couple storms coming along. To, so it yo-yos up and down, but we're not at record high levels like this one press article suggested. Well, uh, you know, we uh, we've talked with a colleague of yours. We talked about him plenty, or I should say, uh, some of you know, Dr. Judah Cohen. He was our uh, feature for our um, uh, winter outlook that we put out. We did it on video. We did it on podcast. We did it in written. Actually, just came out on the uh, 29th. And uh, you know, he said, you know, we look at that snow cover over in Siberia and Eurasia. It got off to such a quick start, but then kind of flatlined. And he said that was kind of um unusual to him he said he hasn't really seen much like that and he's now he's you know still trying to figure out what that means for the uh for the winter ahead yeah good point it picked up a little bit in early november he looks at october a lot yeah in yeah september it really jumped right in but as you as you and judah mentioned it flatlined picked up a little bit in early november and still a little above normal but it didn't head off to the races um it could be interesting to see what comes along. Gotcha. You know, and uh, just real quick for everybody, you know, snow season in New Jersey. What have we seen over the decades? Are we getting snowier, less snowier? Do, do we know certain months that are getting snowier and less snowier? Yeah, great question. And the fact is, despite the fact New Jersey is getting um, considerably milder, including in the winter season, we've not see a seen a decline in snowfall when you total up all the snowfalls of the season. There's a little suggestion with minor statistical significance that we're getting more of our snow in larger events. So we're not getting nickel and dimed as much. Um, but as we know in New Jersey and South Jersey knew last winter for sure, well above normal snowfall from two events. Yeah. So it only takes one to really make a difference. And I think that's, that's part of it. But we've seen notable large events over the last decade or two um, but that hasn't been accompanied by perennially excessive snowfall years. But on the other hand, we've had some weak years, but not every year being weak. So it's it's so highly variable. Um, we don't see a clear sign here. Maybe we're getting larger events, but not more of them. And maybe at the expense, if you will, of smaller events. So it's it's snow. You know, it's a combination of having the moisture available, but also having plentiful cold air. And that's a tough combination to achieve in New Jersey, easier up in the highlands, more difficult down low on the South Jersey coast. Right. And, you know, the invite's still open. If you want to come to the shore and see some real snow this winter, you're always more than welcome to come by. Well, let's see if you can beat the rest of the state two years in a row. I believe off the top of my head, that would be unprecedented in about 100 hey, years of record. I but think so. First, there's always a first. We'll say, I, I believe it was Galloway at the top spot with your um, with the state climatologist network at 36 inches on the dot. That was the most in the state. All right. Well, I wasn't expecting to talk about snow at the top, but I wanted to talk about hurricane season at the top because as we go into december we say goodbye to the official atlantic hurricane season um it was an unusual season um you know when you look at the numbers just alone doesn't sound anything too crazy 
14 named storms, eight hurricanes, two of them major hurricanes, three, four, five category, category three, four, five hurricanes. But I think more of the process of how we got there was unusual. We had a quick start. Uh, we had a couple of early season storms. But then this long gap from, I believe it was July 3rd until August 31st, where we didn't have a thing. And then we had that flurry of activity, settled down for October a little bit. And then November had a little, you know, flare up as well, which is quite unusual. Just want your uh, overall thoughts on, you know, how hurricane season went in the Atlantic Hurricane Basin and, you know, here in New Jersey. Uh, it was an interesting one. It was uh, back end loaded for the most part. Those early storms were very forgettable. Yeah, th they were fish storms. Relatively short lived. One was just off the southeast coast that lived for about a day. Um, and, and, and then that quiescent period when you simply had the wrong atmospheric pattern in the tropical, uh, subtropical Atlantic. You had dust coming off the African continent that was stabilizing the atmosphere by warming the upper atmosphere with all this dust um, soaking up solar radiation. Um, so despite forecasts for it to be a very active, above active, above average season uh, due to a La Nina event taking place in the tropical Pacific, other factors came into play. Um, so it, when you look at the numbers that you just gave, that's average. Yeah. Four is average seven not eight uh hurricanes are average uh three not two um uh, major storms are average uh, but once it got going I, I like it was kind of scatter shot um you had fiona shoot right up the middle of the atlantic very powerful storm but yeah. it was a storm grazed bermuda then you had ian the other major storm that just pounded florida i mean just really hit florida ex exceedingly hard and brought rain and anyone along the jersey coast knows a lot of coastal erosion when the yeah. remnants of that storm stalled off uh, our coast and near the coast uh the first four or five days of october so but then you had some late season storms go into uh, Central America, one uh, Lisa came into Belize uh, and out. Um, so they were all over the place um, and there was no real locked in pattern um, to what was going on. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll think back of this season is, you know, as you said, a little bit odd, uh, a little bit scattershot, um, nothing excessively powerful when you added up all the storm power rankings um, and underperforming compared to what was predicted based on previous knowledge of La Nina patterns and such. Yeah, it was, uh, like, like you said, um, kind of an unusual season. And, you know, hopefully we don't get one of those late season surprises after the season ends. Yeah, you, you never know. But uh, hopefully we won't have to think too much about hurricane season until we get to next spring. Um, I want to switch to temperatures during the month of November here because it was almost like a, a tale of two Novembers. You know, the first half of November, so much above average. Then we really got below average from about the 14th all the way until right about Thanksgiving. And then the end has been generally a little milder here. Um, we had some really at least cold for November days, uh, at least at Atlantic City or National Airport. We only reached 40 degrees on the 20th um, at the marina. Uh, we had a um, excuse me at the airport. We got to a low of 18 degrees. But just, you know, two weeks before that on the 7th, we got up to 80 at the shore, let alone inland where we got into the low 80s here. Uh, what did you make of it? And where do we stack up, you know, for the month when all is said and done? Yeah, that it, it was. And, and it's funny, you're talking a tale of, of two Novembers. Um, that's probably going to be the title to my monthly summary. That's what I've already gotten uh, on a uh, early draft. Great minds think alike. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it took till the middle of November for the average temperature for the first two weeks of November to fall below what was the average for the whole month of, of October. 
Wow. Uh, October is a little cooler than average, but that's how warm the first part of first part of November was. It was like the last part of September and early October. Um, the 81 high you mentioned on the 7th yeah. airport was the highest on record for so late in the season at the airport. And the 80 on the 7th at yeah. the arena was also the highest, not only the highest for so late in the season, but it tied the highest on record for the entire month of November mm -hmm. that had been hit on the 1st. Uh, in 1950 and the third in 2016. And we remember the marina, the record goes back to the 1870s. Oh, yeah. This gives everyone listening an idea of how unusual the high temperatures were. But let's talk low temperatures. Yes, our favorite, the low temps. Because the low was 65 at the airport on the 6th. And that's the highest so late in the season. Um, the low, the low at the marina was sixty-six on the sixth. And again, we had so we had record low minimums. Uh, excuse me, record, record high. Yeah, the for, warmest night. Yeah, you, know, you could say, and in, in, in for so everybody what, listening out there, your minimums were five to ten degrees above what you'd normally get for an average high. Yeah. So all kinds of things. Um, but the 18 you mentioned was not a record. It was a degree or two. It was one degree shy of the record, yeah, at the airport. And and the airport had hit 32, had hit freezing on the 19th of October. Um, so there had been a couple freezes up till then. But the marina had its first freeze on the 20th when they dropped the 30. And then the monthly low was the next morning on the 29th, uh, 29 degrees on the 21st. Right. So no, not even close to records. Um, and a little bit later than usual for the first freeze. But there you go. The airport had its first freeze over a month before the marina. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, for a while there. I'm wondering, like, is it going to be that 2016 year? We have to go all the way until New Year's to see that first freeze, but, but we did get it, you know, and, and when you're in early November, you're like, geez, I mean, I was sweating. I remember the first weekend in November, I was just sweating outside. I had the air conditioner on the car. I'm like, this is crazy. I actually looked look this up. I, I have these notes from that heat wave for November heat wave, we'll say, you know, that, that 81 degree high at the airport in early November, that was the average high for Melbourne Beach, Florida, uh, you know, for that time of the year. So who needs Florida when you got New Jersey? I mean, it's the same thing, you know? I say that most every day of the year. Hey, all we're missing are the palm trees. Although Seattle City still has some palm, they still have some palm trees hanging around, but a uh, incredible warmth. Uh, and then to go to that, you know, to it, it, like below average temperatures, near record breaking, you know, it, it just, it really shows, you know, how much fall the transition season, but this was like, you know, to, to another level. And this after an October, which was pretty well behaved for October, where we often see this transition sometime in October. But I, I didn't cover the fact that, and you alluded to this, despite the cold later in the month, the month still averaged two degrees above normal at the airport, which is the 13th warmest on record. And at the uh, marina, it was three and a half degrees above normal, which tied for the 10th warmest going back to the 19th century. Uh, remember, these average, these below, uh, these averages, three and a half above, are based on 1991 to 2020 means. If you average the whole period of time, it was more like five or six degrees above the whole period of record average. So that just shows you it that cold air that came in before Thanksgiving and up to Thanksgiving couldn't catch up to the warmth wow. of early part of the month. So the warmth wins out. Worth wins out. And let me just ask a quick follow-up. For all of South Jersey, right, are we expecting to be about that 10th or 15th warmest? I know, you know we're recording this on the 30th. I saw some preliminary numbers yesterday. We're filming, we're taping this on the 30th. And the state preliminary numbers, 3.1 above normal for the month, tied for 13th warmest. Right. And that doesn't include 
Sunday, which was very warm, particularly in South Jersey, or even Monday when it got close to normal. So it's it's got to be around 3-1, 3-2, 3, one, three, two, three, three. not quite top 10. Gotcha. All right. So just on the cusp there. Um, all right. Well, we'll take a break here. And then the other side, we're going to talk about rainfall during November. We'll talk about our drought update. And we'll talk a little bit about winter. You're listening to the Something in the Air podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to the Something in the Air podcast, a two-time New Jersey Press Association Award winner. We can't do it without Dr. Dave Robinson, who is with us at the top of every month, talking about the month that was. We just talked about temps. Let's talk about rainfall here across the area as we went into November here. Um, you know, if you look at specific locations, Atlantic City or National, 3.13 inches of rain, although it's not including what's going to fall today, but we should be somewhere around average. The marina, a decent amount drier, though, um, below average uh, as of third, excuse me, as of Wednesday. But again, probably going to get closer average after this rain falls on the last day of the month. So just wanted to uh, see what you had in terms of rain. If anything stuck out to you, nothing really stuck out to me too, too much. No, it was, eh. you know, we kind of held our own. Uh, we didn't go down the rabbit hole or down the drain, if you will, but it wasn't overwhelming. Um, you know, you mentioned the marina, you mentioned the airport. Um, as usual, I look at uh, Kokoraz observations from yes. Atlantic Cape May and Ocean Counties. And here quickly, so listen for your county, uh, <laughs> wettest spot. And this is through the morning. I got to get a pen for this. I take some notes. Through the morning of the 30th was Galloway. Okay. Uh, 3.84 3. inches, but not a huge spread because the driest with full reports for the month was Egg Harbor Township at 2.77. And yeah, that's about normal. I mean, it's okay. And this time of the year, the plants aren't using the moisture any longer and people aren't watering their lawns. So some of that and evaporation's lower. So the more of the rain is soaking in uh, to the sandy soils. So not bad, uh, but nothing exceptional. Um, Cape May County, uh, lower township, 2.88 inches was the high. And Wildwood Crest, 2.13 was the low. Again, only three quarters of an inch spread and a little bit on the lower side than uh, right. up or a little in Atlanta County. Then you go a little further north, Ocean County, uh, Point Pleasant Beach up at the north end, 4.8 five, four inches uh, down towards the little further south, Stafford Township lowest with 2.92. So a little big, bigger spread of about an inch and a half there. So again, sufficient to meet the needs, to do a little soil replenish, but, but, but not that soaking rain. We need to really perk up the groundwater, which keeps is keeping Cape May County and even portions of um, Cumberland County in the uh, the abnormally dry category on the U.S. drought watch, uh, drought monitor. And the southern part of the peninsula just still hasn't had those soaking rains going back almost a year now. Um, and they're in D1, still considered, I, I consider a, a moderate drought, but that's mostly because of lower groundwater levels. So it's really, so when you look at the lower part of Cape May County as opposed to the upper part, you're saying it's really a groundwater difference that that you and the team that's putting this together is seeing. That's what we're seeing now. We've seen a little bit, it's certainly leveled off. The groundwater is not declining, but we'd like to see more of a soaking rains to pick up the groundwater levels some. You know, as and it's the same in the north part of the state, interestingly enough, it's at the far north, the highlands, um, they're still in D1 or um, some level of drought. And the surrounding areas up in the northern part of the state are ab still abnormally dry. And there we have to worry about not just groundwater, stream flow and reservoir levels, which are five to 10% below where they should be at this time of the year, which is 
their minimum for the year. So we're going to really need to rely on average, if not a little above average, winter, spring rainfall to be prepared water-wise for the next growing season. Right. Yeah, because, you know, I click on that drought monitor map and I see New Jersey. I'm like, oh, it looks like lower part of Cape May County is out of drought, but it's such a small area. I have to click on the state and then I see that little tiny part. You know, just a, a couple soaking rains and the D0 will disappear. The D1 will go to D0. And right. I think that's it because it's an isolated area. Oh, yeah. Marva, they've done better up through the state until you get about to uh, Route 78 to Route 80. And, and then up north of there is where things dry out. Uh, further. And frankly, that's the more worrisome area um, because that's where the, the majority of the drinking water is. Yeah. Third. Yeah. Um, the majority no of the potable water is gathered for most of the state's population. Right. You know, somebody say it's the Cape May bubble at work with uh, Lower Cape being uh, you know, still stuck in drought. That's the, uh, that, that's the classic definition from what I'm told of the Cape May bubble, that lower part of Cape, you know. Some people even say once you get north of the Cape May Canal, you're in North Jersey. <laughs> uh, having grown up in Bergen County, I, I often thought anything south of Newark was south. Oh, ah, okay. Well, so, you know, it's all oh, relative, right? right? Except, um, except so, Long Beach Island, where I'd go on vacation as a kid. Right, right. Exactly. Uh, so we talked about drought. We talked about the rainfall. Yeah, I didn't see much either. Uh, the, the biggest rain was on the uh, 15th. Uh, generally between like three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half. Um, Ocean County might saw a little bit more. It's why some of those totals, uh, Point Pleasant Beach was higher because I think there was some ocean effect rain that was actually raining that area a little bit better. But overall, you know, like you said, pretty uh, pretty benign. I can't remember if that was the rain from the remnants of Nicole or that was a couple of days earlier. But Nicole's heaviest rain <clears throat> threatened New Jersey but then the storm tracked a little further west and western Pennsylvania and western New York State got two to four inches of rain from right. the rents of the call. And they were going dry and that pulled them right out of any concerns right. um, uh, of uh, encroaching drought. So we just by 150 miles, we missed getting a really good soaking from the remnants of Nicole. Yeah, no doubt. Um, we got a couple minutes left here. Um Tell us what else is going on with the climate office as we're uh, as we're getting into December. You're obviously plenty busy. We got school winding down as well. Finals are going to be around the corner. Plus, we got all the holidays and New Year's. I know you're a big New Year's Eve guy. I know you'll be out and about. I, 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 I'm going to be returning back from a trip out of town, actually, on New Year's <laughs> Eve. Um, so I'll, I'll be in an airplane. Oh, okay. Well, hey, that, that's not bad. You can actually, can you get New Year's Eve into New Year's Day twice? Like, are you going to fly west through the, uh, through the time zones? I'm going to be coming back from, uh, Europe. So, so uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I'll be, uh, yeah. New Year's Eve will last a longer time. Wow. That's true. You know? Yeah. 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 I actually had somebody, quick story. Somebody, I, I actually went to Rutgers. He was on a cruise one year and they like, they celebrated New Year's, you know, but then they went west, like, you know, just a couple miles in. The captain was like, we're going to do it all again. And everyone like went crazy. And then they just did the whole champagne thing again. So it does happen uh, with some people. They get to celebrate New Year's twice. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Just a short term little getaway. Um, but a lot going on. <clears throat> we're trying to get some new maps up on our website. Um, <clears throat> we're trying to keep the stations funded, the program funded. And uh the station the recording. Uh, we had a good field season. Um, we don't have spiders now coming up our rain gauges or, or as many birds, and we don't have mowing to do around our station. So in the field, it's a little bit quieter, um, but we've got a lot going on behind the scenes that people never see to really keep this ticking. And I got a wonderful group, small group, um, that really helps things um, keep going. So this is really a time of the year where you thank people and you acknowledge people. And, and that's the, the small but mighty team of people that help out this program, work on, in the field on this program, and work behind the scenes in front of computers and, and, and thinking of things up in the cloud being stored and, and, and quality controlled and then disseminated to everyone every five minutes. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's a great, great resource. I'm on there all the time. I even have an automatic timer on that website. So it updates uh, for me. So I don't have to keep clicking. But uh, it's a great website, njweather.org. I'll talk about Coco Ross for a minute. Uh, that is a community, no, a community collaborative rain, hail, and snow network. What yeah. oh, did I miss anything? No, it's interesting there because it's about to celebrate its 25th anniversary. In awesome. New- All right. Colorado. And yeah. I'm going to be giving a talk at the American Meteorological Society meeting in Denver uh, the second week of January as part of a s- symposium honoring, celebrating the 25th yeah. anniversary. Um, I'm giving a talk on the Kokoros program in New Jersey. But this is a great time of the year for people to join in. And I know yeah. it's a cold time of the year and people need to be careful, but we rely tremendously on Kokoros observations of snow that just can't be found in the quantity and quality that our observers gather um, to understand what's going on snow-wise. Our automated stations, for the very, very most part, just a couple, don't measure snow. We rely on the manual observations of our citizen scientists, and we're just covering the state like never before over the last 10 to 15 years of the Kokoraz program. So it's it, this is a good time of year to join if you like to get that ruler out and learn how to measure snow. Absolutely. You can do that at cocoross.org. It's uh it's a cheap hobby, uh, too. You know, it's, it's really you're just paying for the cost of the uh the rain gauge. Um, that's about I think $30. But once you do that, it's pretty much free from there on. You have your app. You can I, you know, I have my Coco Ross app and can input snowfall totals, but it's a great tool. I use it too. You know, I see what you guys put out there. So it, it's tremendous. And we can always use more people. Um, and I think especially if you live in Cumberland County, uh, we could definitely use some more people there as well. Salem and Cumberland. Salem and Cumberland. There you go. So Salem and Cumberland. Always can use observers everywhere. That is true. Maybe. And, and if you, you know, if you want, maybe you can move to Cumberland County, and become a Coco Ross observer. You know, if you're living in Atlantic County, you might want to, you know, help out the cause. Yeah, well, contact Joe for that. Don't yeah. contact the state. Talk, talk to me. I'll hook you up with a, a real estate uh, advisor. But uh, <laughs> uh, just kidding. So uh, we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, th- this was great. Um, you know, November fairly, you know, temperatures were all over the place, but otherwise, you know, um, nothing much in the way of rainfall or snow. Uh, that probably will change a little bit when we get to the end of December here. We'll have your December recap and our annual top 10 weather events of 2022. We will do that as well. We'll compare a list. We'll have a good time, but we'll see you guys um, at the end of December and beginning of January. So happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's to you all. And uh, we will catch you in 2023. Take care, everybody.